Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, the eyes of the world are upon you. They end up just decimated. Your task will not be an easy one. Death trap. Obstacles. Machine gun fire. Barbed wire. And mines. A complete slaughter. The dead and those about to die is the rest of the story of Omaha Beach. Through the eyes of the Big Red One, the story beyond what you see in the movies and what you may have read uh, in other really good books too. But believe it or not, there was more to know. This key unit that at a major moment in time makes a key difference in why one of the most important battles in modern human history turns out the way it does. It's history the way that I think it ought to be done, uh, from the bottom up. It's about the average soldier, what this person experienced, why things happened the way they did. It's a story about leadership at the junior level. Many of them were just average guys who ended up drafted or volunteered and ended up in this circumstance and kind of did what they had to do. And really, in a way, that's what history is. It is a human story about people. It's not just dates to be memorized. The 1st Infantry Division, or Big Red One, as it was nicknamed, had seen a lot of fighting in World War II already by 1944, by about March and April of 1944. That Omaha Beach was being heavily fortified by the Germans. And so the planners came up with a, a kind of an impromptu solution, uh, and that was a combined team of engineers called GAP Assault Teams, Navy and Army engineers, whose job was literally to use explosives to blow gaps through all these obstacles. Uh, and in fact, one out of every four American soldiers who come to shore at Omaha Beach on D-Day morning is an engineer. Casualty rates are 45% and upward, they are really able to blow very few gaps. Quite often, soldiers were taking cover behind the obstacles. When the gap assault teams would even successfully set charges and prepare them to blow, they would find that their own soldiers were right there uh, taking cover and that they could not persuade them to move, and so they were not gonna blow their charges and blow up their own guys. Colonel George Taylor was one of the Army's leading authorities on amphibious invasions. He had a philosophy that what was most important for any amphibious assault was something really quite simple. Get people off the beach as soon as you possibly can. And so when he comes ashore about an hour and a half after H hour on D-Day and he sees the chaos in front of him and the carnage, he realizes, I've got to take steps here to make sure that people get off this beach, that they start doing something. Not just lying there, but to take action somehow. He strides up and down Omaha Beach uh, throughout the morning and says, hey, only two kinds of people are going to be on this beach, the dead and those are going to die. Now get the hell off the beach. There are literally hundreds of people who hear him say that and are motivated into some sort of action. When you're an American at Omaha Beach, if you're on the beach, you're basically a target. If you're inland, you are a hunter. The Normandy invasion in Omaha Beach survives as one of those rare moments when you can look to kind of one or two days in history and say, boy, this set the tone for a long time and we still feel the aftershocks of it today. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. <laughs>